After an absolutely pitiful couple of months of game releases, it's finally heating up with all of the new PS4 games coming in September, and there are so many interesting games, so many new IPs, continuations of existing series, I can go on and on. There are a lot of compelling games being released in September, but in today's video, I want to specifically highlight 10 awesome new PS4 games that are coming in the month of September. There are so many more games that I could go over. However, just for the sake of the video, I'm going to limit it to 10. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Kicking things off, I do want to mention Catherine Full Body Edition, which is shaping up very nicely. Now, if you didn't know what Catherine is, this was a game that was released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, and it's a very interesting puzzle game with a romance story with a lot of decision making, and the story is pretty zany. However, that's a part of the game and an element of the game that I liked a lot because it just told such a wacky story with so many interesting elements. And it kind of came together, and now we have the game making the transition to the PS4, but it's not just a typical remaster. Full body, you could see it as a whole new game, and it goes to show because it is being priced at a full $59.99, which even with all of the new content, that's a little bit hard to stomach because fundamentally, it is still the original game. But they are adding a ton of stuff, including a brand new character. So with a brand new character with another route to go on top of the two additional routes, that means that there is a lot of new content to get into. So that's pretty exciting if you don't pick it up right away And I can understand why you would forego it at a full $60 down the line if it is down to $40 or south of that I would say that it is definitely worth it Especially if you missed out on the game originally when it was released back in like 2012 or 2013 Catherine Full Body Edition is due out on September 3rd. Next up, a game that so many people are excited for is Borderlands 3. Yes, Borderlands is finally making its foray into a current generation platform. I was tempted to say a next generation platform, but guess what? We're coming to the end of the PlayStation 4's life. It doesn't really make any sense to call it a next gen platform, but that just goes to show that Borderlands has been absent for quite a while. Yes, we got Tales of Borderlands. Yes, we got a couple of remasters, but we didn't get a brand new Borderlands game this generation until now and that was rather disappointing but here comes Borderlands 3 and it is shaping up incredibly well with a ton of new elements but also retaining the fundamental elements that made everyone love Borderlands. Now obviously there's been a little bit of controversy as to how 2K has been handling this game with its Epic Store exclusivity on PC and them raiding somebody. Okay that I'm not a big fan of but Borderlands 3 as a game it is looking very good and if you enjoyed Borderlands 2 or Borderlands 1 and you like the premise of those games this game is just going to amplify that, add a ton of content, and I imagine that this is going to be a game that's going to be updated for quite a while with DLC and things of that nature, and Borderlands 3 will be out on September 13th. Okay, next up, here's a game that I am very excited for, and it's coming from Spike Chunsoft, AI The Seminium Files. AI The Seminium Files is set in a near future Tokyo. Detective Kaname Date is on the case of a mysterious serial killer. Date must investigate crime scenes as well as dreams on the hunt for clues. From the mind of Kataro Uchikoshi, Zero Escape series director and with character designed by Yusuke Kozaki from No More Heroes and the Fire Emblem series, a thrilling neo-noir detective adventure is about to unfold. The background of the story is set in one rainy night in November. A woman's body is found at an abandoned theme park mounted on a merry-go-round horse. She had been stabbed repeatedly and her left eye was gouged out. Date is of the Metropolitan Police Department and he arrives on the scene. He recognizes the woman and suddenly he hears a noise from inside the merry-go-round. He breaks into the merry-go-round central column to find a young girl and in her hand, she grips a bloody ice pick. So obviously, this is going to have a lot of suspense to it, a lot of horror elements attached to it as well. And given that the director of Zero Escape worked on it, I am expecting a thrill ride out of this one. AI The Submidium Files is due out on September 17th. Next up, here's a game that saw a couple of delays, but it'll finally be out this month, and that is Code Vein. Code Vein is a brand new game coming from Bandai Namco Studios, and there's a lot of resemblances drawn to a game like Dark Souls in that it's going to feature that challenging action RPG playstyle, but it definitely has its own unique elements given that it does have a more anime look to it. It's going to appeal to some people more so than others, but that's good. It has its own unique flair comparatively to a game like Dark Souls, and it's not going to see those direct comparisons all the time. And the game is set in the not too distant future. A mysterious disaster has brought collapse to the world as we know it. Towering skyscrapers, once symbols of prosperity, are now lifeless graves of humanity's past pierced by the thorns of judgment. At the center of the destruction lies a hidden society of revenants called Vayne. The final stronghold is 
Warriors were the remaining few fight to survive blessed with gifts of power in exchange for their memories and a thirst for blood. Given to the bloodlust fully and risk becoming one of the lost fiendish ghouls devoid of any remaining humanity wandering aimlessly in search of blood, the lost will stop at nothing to satisfy their hunger, team up, and embark on a journey to the ends of hell to unlock your past and escape your living nightmare in Code Vein. If you're into Souls games, if you dig the anime, look, this is gonna be right up your alley and Code Vein will finally be dropping on September 27th. Next up, here's a little bit of an underrated gem, and I think a lot more people should pay attention to this game, and that is The Sojourn. The Sojourn is a tale of light, darkness, and the nature of reality. Traverse a thought-provoking puzzle game, and it's a immersive, color-drenched world of light and shadow. This game reminds me a lot of sublime games such as Journey and Flower. It definitely has a bigger emphasis on its gameplay and its puzzle-oriented style of play, but I am shocked that hardly anyone is talking about the game because I think it could turn out to be a game that surprises a lot of people. The game tells dozens upon dozens of challenging puzzles delve into four beautifully crafted chapters each with their own distinct style and atmosphere banish the darkness in order to reveal the obstacles the sojourn has prepared for you and unravel a captivating tale of light darkness and the nature of reality the sojourn is scheduled for a release on september 20th Next up, if you've been following this channel for a little bit, you might have heard me hype up a game called Greedfall. It is the latest open world RPG from a studio known as Spiders, and they've worked on a couple of other RPGs, Technomancer, Mars Warlog, so you can see they haven't worked on a ton of notable RPGs and RPGs that have garnered a lot of fanfare, but a couple of interesting titles nonetheless, and I think with Greedfall, based on the gameplay that we've seen, this might be the title that puts Spiders as a development studio on the map. The game touts engage in a core role-playing experience and forge the destiny of a new world seeping with magic and filled with riches, lost secrets, and fantastic creatures. With diplomacy, deception, and force become part of a living, evolving world, influence its course, and shape your story. This is going to be a game with a lot of decision-making and complete freedom in character progression. So not only decisions in terms of how you navigate the story, but also decisions in how you create your character and progress. You can play as a male or female, customize your appearance, and freely choose your abilities, spells, and skills. This isn't a game that I'm completely sold on at this point, but I am very captivated by it. Unfortunately, as an open world RPG, it's releasing just a few days before Borderlands 3, so that's a little bit unfortunate from a commercial standpoint. I just don't know how largely this game is going to resonate, but I do think it has a lot of potential, and we'll see how it turns out when it drops September 10th. Next up, we have the follow-up to Deck 13 Surge in The Surge 2. Now, obviously, Deck 13 worked on Lords of the Fallen on top of The Surge, and these games also see a direct comparison to Dark Souls but once again definitely offer their own unique flair and this one has more of a sci-fi emphasis to it in a bid to survive explore the sprawling devastated Jericho City play ferocious threats and brutal unforgiving combat slashing and tearing the limbs off your opponents to steal their equipment the game touts hardcore brutal melee combat face deadly foes and colossal bosses cut off parts of the enemy you want to loot and rich character progression and customization on the way to Jericho City, your plane is shot down by a mysterious storm and crash lands in the outskirts. You wake up weeks later in a detention facility inside the city, armor-clad soldiers in force martial law, robots are on a rampage, and a dark expanding nanostorm looms over the cityscape. I think Death 13 has been building upon their games one another. I thought Lords of the Fallen was pretty good. I thought The Surge was even better, and I think The Surge 2 could be their best product yet and a standout experience from them. We'll see how it turns out as it is being released on September 24th. Next up, here's a big one contra is on the comeback with contra rogue corpse Contra Rogue Corps is set several years after the events of Contra 3, The Alien Wars. It takes place in Damn City where people go mad from being there. It takes a top-down isometric view similar to Neo Contra, and it provides a single-player story campaign, multiplayer online cooperative, or four-player local cooperative play. Players assume the role of four classic Contra series characters as a former military group of bounty hunters and treasure finders. You've got Kazir, a rebuilt cyborg from The Alien Wars, and Miss Harakiri, an assassin with a parasitic alien attached. The Gentleman, a well-cultured alien bug and hungry beast, a brilliantly scientific cyborg giant panda. A lot of quirkiness in all of the characters, but that makes it ever so more engaging. If you are a fan of Contra, if you're a fan of this playstyle, this is definitely going to be one to be on the lookout for. I know at this point in 2019, Konami isn't everyone's favorite publisher and developer, but hey, with the comeback of Contra, I'm hoping for the best out of this one because I know so many of you are incredibly nostalgic with this franchise. We'll see how it turns out as it's also dropping on September 24th. Next, 
up? One of my favorite JRPGs of last generation is making a comeback. Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch Remastered is being released later next month. Now, of course, Nino Kuni 2 was released this generation, but whenever I talked about Nino Kuni 2, the imperative notion that I had was that Nino Kuni 1 was the superior game. I thought the storytelling was better in Nino Kuni 1, and I thought it was just a tighter experience all around and more engaging. Not to say that Nino Kuni 2 is a bad game, I actually think it's one of the best JRPGs this generation, but Nino Kuni 1 just on another level and for all of you that enjoyed Nino Kuni 2 and you want to go back and play the first game now you're gonna finally be able to do so as Nino Kuni 1 is making its way over to the PS4 now it is unfortunate that it's being priced at $49.99 that might be seen as a little bit hefty but as far as quality is concerned I do think it kind of warrants that but you do have to assess the fact that it's nearly a decade old at this point so take that for what you will if you don't pick it up right away sometime down the line do check it out because it is a high quality JRPG and lastly I do want to mention another game that's hard being mentioned for a release in September and not a lot of people know about it and that is Police Stories. Police Stories has a very old school look to it that's right up my alley and it's a fresh take on top down shooters with an emphasis on tactics that forces you to make split second decisions, neutralize criminals, rescue civilians and defuse bombs in single player mode or online co-op and remember shooting first is not an option. A lot of unique elements are included in the game. The surrender system allows you to apprehend the suspects without resorting to violence, fire a warning shot near them, or engage them in melee combat. Those are just some of the ways you can make them submit. Issue commands to your fellow cop Rick Jones. Make sure to use him wisely, and who knows, he might save your life in return. Randomly place criminals, hostages, and evidence. Make every playthrough a little bit different and offers a lot of replayability. You'll also have access to top-of-the-line police equipment. I think this game looks rather cool. I don't know how it's going to turn out just because it does offer a pretty unique playstyle, more emphasis on the strategy style of the game even though it is a top-down shooter but we'll see how it turns out as it does drop on September 19th. And that's gonna conclude this video. A lot to talk about with just these 10 games. A lot of compelling new titles. I think Police Stories looks really interesting. Of course, Borderlands 3 is gonna be up everyone's alley. Catherine Full Body is gonna be great. Code Vein looks awesome. I think the Sojourn is gonna end up surprising a lot of people. Greedfall can be one of the more impactful games of the year in terms of really establishing a studio as a top tier studio. So a lot of different narratives are gonna unfold in terms of these game releases coming in September. Let us know what games you're planning on picking up next month and sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.